now at a national level. For others, I've said, from what they've told me, there's, there's no real need to go beyond that. They should be focusing on land or their community. I, I really leave it up to you to decide, but read the new material, and I'm sure you can make that choice. Um, okay. Uh, Guest 63, I don't quite understand your question um, on that, so if you can qualify that, I will see if we, what we mean. Um, what other questions do we have here? Uh, okay, the question is, what do I do for a living? Uh, I write software. I have worked for self-managed uh, superannuation, which is retirement. I provide consulting for a couple of companies that have been long-standing clients. And then all the money that I have earned from that, pretty much apart from living, has gone into Acadia. So over the last well, 25 years, but certainly over the last uh, 15 years, uh, I have probably given up several hundred thousand dollars worth of money that's gone into Acadia. And in order to do that, I founded a company which is closing at the end of the year called Acadia Books. And I even tried at early stages to use that as a way of selling books, but there was too much effort involved. So that's what I do for a living. Uh, I make money. And then out of that money, except for, and I actually received $500 from someone the other day, which was wonderful. Um, I, apart from that, I've really had no donations over the years and years and years. Apart from that, everything I make goes back into this. And it's why I don't own a home. I have very few assets. Uh, that's who I am. So that's, uh, that's answering your questions, guest 63. Um, if there's a problem with that, if someone objects to that kind of life, let me know. Um, I don't think anything I do is uh, closed. Um, what else? What other questions do we have? Um, uh, well, okay. we have someone in in queue, so why don't we take the yeah, that let's question do that. after? Let's do that. Yeah, good. From uh, Shambo again. Okay, uh, Shambo, you're on. I went. I, Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hi. I forgot one question. Uh, I was just curious about the birth certificate. Yep. Uh, how can we find? Uh, I guess we assume our parents were the grantor. Hate to use that word, but uh, so trustee and beneficiary, according to SESQV, they're the beneficiary. Uh, where or how does that make us the trustee? Uh, you're not the trustee of the birth certificate um, by their system. The, look, the key answer to the birth certificate, because I know that this is an area of intense interest, the birth certificate is more than one thing. That's, that's the honest answer. It's more than one thing. It is not only a death certificate. It's a birth certificate of a... Um, of a trust, trust relationship. It's also a title. It's also an indulgence. It's, it's more than one thing. So if you try and boil it down and say, this is what a birth certificate is, there is no single line that describes precisely what it is. And you know what? Ultimately, only they know what they mean by birth certificate. We know that the birth certificate recording an event under Roman time in a register is a exact mirroring of the register system of the Roman Empire in its claim of occupation and slavery under the performance of census. We know this because the roles, the names, and the history is identical. That's what we do know. So I think the, the short answer is we do provide a number of insights into what we believe birth certificates to be. If, if we go beyond that, I think we're spending too much time trying to 
jump down a rabbit hole and determine what, what it is more than that. I think there's more than enough evidence that the birth certificate is an intrinsic part of their control and claim over us. And what is more, they want us to hold it because by holding it, we are tacitly agreeing to their continued uh, assumptions based on holding that. So when we surrender it, we are performing an act to them to say we do no, we, we no longer abide by, agree or consent to the presumptions. Now that is a, a key definitive act and we've seen already that it causes them no end of grief and uh, we're getting all these tricky letters back. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thanks so much, uh, Frank. Uh, yeah, you know, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you, your signature wasn't on it, on, on the birth certificate. So again, is uh, why are you holding it? Uh, let's go to uh, the next caller. Is uh, We have Truth Matters. Uh, Truth Matters, you're on the air. Hello, Brian. Hello, Frank. This is Greg up in Idaho. Hi. Hi, Greg. No, go off speaker here. Sorry, that was too loud. Um, I uh, just wanted to share. I've been reading through your um, scriptures that you have on the One Faith of God. dot org, yeah. and I, I attended seminary back in the early '80s and quit when I realized that there was a lot of information that wasn't being put out. And I've spent much of my life trying to dissect a lot of the truths of uh, Jesus. And one of the things that I discovered was was um, if I focused on the words that were profound, I would find a lot of the answers, but um, nothing like I have found by reading, for example, the uh, Gospel of Truth and some of the others that you have listed there that are some of the most profound uh, writings that I've ever read. And I just wanted to let everybody know that um, I just wanted your comment on this too, Frank, and that is that um, for years I knew that the real Jesus had existed in your history in the book of the green race, which is for me is, um, was a massive eye opener. Um, and then we, we asked you to direct us to where the scriptures were that he'd written. Um, these scriptures are so profound. And the reason I'm, I'm bringing this out is that when I've read through the four gospels and the little bits and pieces that I could tell were the truth of his words, they would be fragmented and they wouldn't be complete. But when I started reading the gospel of truth and other writings that he has, I started seeing it in context and it totally, his words totally support what you shared tonight. And so for all of the people on the call that are afraid that, that we've been jumping into some form of a heresy or an error, I, I would challenge everybody uh, from somebody like myself, who actually was in a seminary back when I was in my uh, late 20s and challenged professors to their face, I can tell you that a lot of the doctrines that they teach, both in Protestant and Orthodox and probably in the Catholic seminaries, are undefensible as far as logic. And... Um, the true teachings of Jesus are fully logical, and um, I believe that, and I, and I personally know that I've been drawn on my life to be where I'm at today, to be able to catch your call starting back in November and to see, to feel the resonance of the truth that you were sharing. And then what profoundly confirmed it for me was the aspect of the deep truths that resonated out of the pen and out of the words of Jesus himself and plus others like him. But anyways, I just want to let you... I want to let you know how much I appreciate what you've done and how is that you've helped me with my life to fill out the blanks um, that I myself was, uh, was, and I just challenge everybody to read. There, there's so much to read on your, uh, like on that one faith of God, there's so much evidence and to get the history of the Nazarenes and to understand the, 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 the scriptures that are there. It's, it's just is overwhelmingly powerful to me. Anyway, sorry to ramble. Well, no, thank you. The, Thank you. Look, I, I appreciate that. But look, um, the thing to always bear in mind is that that there there have been many, many incredible men and women that have come before. And so as a model, Yucadia is merely trying to connect the dots and help us awaken to what we are. It's, it, it, it never is, and I say this, and I say this only as a qualification of what you're saying. It's never been about um, raising me up to be anything more. I, 
I constantly have made mistakes. And you know, there are people who have been around with you, Katie, from the beginning, who even today, uh, because of the changes, I mentioned earlier the changes of there used to be an elite group and that elite group was disbanded at the beginning of the year. Now many of those people are still very, very bitter. There are people who, um, who are brought up in a very strict way that when you first raise them an idea, their instant reaction, instant reaction will be to reject it. It's going to take time. Everyone's at a different learning path. And if the, you can find something that's relevant to where you're at and useful, remember this is a model. This is not trying to say uh, as an absolute, you must or else. More, this is a model that ultimately will only survive and thrive if those on the call and those that listen to the call and those that come later choose to embrace it because this model will not succeed or fail on me, it will succeed and fail on you. And there is many, many things there, if you're willing to read, that can help answer questions like questions of faith. So I really appreciate that feedback. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much, Greg. Uh, again, is uh, star eight. Star eight to get in queue for uh, questions. Uh, Frank, anything on the chat? Um, let's just see. Uh, what have we got as questions? Um, okay, question here in Australia. We have local councils who charge land rates. We know that local council is not recognised by the constitution. So we challenge them and now there's been a judgment against us. Um, anything we can do or just drop it? Well, one of the things in, this, in their system is that they use, uh, there's a maxim of law that, that the, um, the, the cause, not the form, is, is what takes um, precedence. But of course, in the courts, they trick us and trick everyone in making form the substance. So what you'll find is that um, if a motion has been imperfected, then sometimes it's not worthwhile flogging a dead horse. There's a different way to approach it. And what may come from this is you may find some, um, for example, original landowners in the area and you may be able to come back from a class action to challenge the aspect of land rates, but challenge it from a constitutional point of view, um, you may have found that you had flaws. So I, I, think, I think that uh, it's worth pursuing if, if you feel that it can, um, can uh, result in a change, but whatever you put up, councils depend in uh, Australia, I know for a fact, depend on rates, and they will out and out find a way to circumvent whatever you do. So if you're going to if you're going to launch a court action, I would suggest you want to know ultimately what you want to see. Uh, having a temporary victory is going to be a huge amount of of effort for a very frustrating result because the councils will lie. It, it may be better to, to cause them to be forced to be into a different model or a different approach or to do it at a time that they have to recognize people who are opting out of the system. Now, that would be powerful. So maybe you want to wait until your community is in place and then pursue an action and then watch out when people can say, I belong to a society that does not recognize, that recognizes constitution, but does not recognize the theft by the land, uh, by these councils. Hey, that might be the ultimate approach. So that's a question, hopefully I've answered for you. Um, uh, what's another question? Is there a process on the website that tells or shows what to do with a state or hospital birth certificate and giving it back to them? 
Um, I, I presume you're talking about.